BMW tells us this is a sports coupe. Whatever your take on that, this second generation version of their X4 is certainly an interesting take on fashionable family motoring, an avant-garde mid-sized crossover coupe you'd want to be seen in. If you can afford the fee, it's a tempting take on the SUV genre, and if you like the looks, then you'll probably like everything else, because it's pure BMW, even down to the now much improved driving dynamics. It's also a little more practical than you might expect. True, the world may not need another car like this, but you certainly might. BMW, more than any other brand, is fully committed to the rather contrary concept that is the coupe-style sports utility vehicle. They pioneered this genre, then popularised it, but have they perfected it with this car, the second-generation X4? The thinking behind this controversial automotive niche dates back to 2008 when BMW dismayed the motoring press but delighted its better-heeled SUV customers with the first-generation X6, a swept-back, sportier version of their larger X5 crossover model. Enough was sold to encourage the Munich maker to extend the concept across the range, hence the decision to create a coupe SUV version of its mid-sized X3 model, christened the X4, and launched in its original form back in 2004. It was directly copied two years later by Mercedes with their GLC Coupe, although interestingly not by other premium brands who merely tried to make new or existing mid-sized SUVs a bit sportier in order to keep up. Uh, like the X6, the X4 sold pretty well in its earliest guise, finding over 200,000 buyers in its first four years on sale. As it turned out, though, that initial design wasn't going to have a very long shelf life. Going forward, BMW needed to align X4 development with the model cycle strategy of its mechanically identical X3 showroom stablemate, hence the way that the introduction of the company's third generation X3 in autumn 2017 was followed by the launch of this Mark II Model X4 in the summer of 2018. As we'll see in this test, it's been moved up market a little in both price and sophistication. That's partly to reflect similar changes in the X3 and partly to make room for the even more compact coupe SUV that BMW launched just before this one, the X1-based X2. Uh, with the rejuvenated X4, we're promised smarter exterior styling and a little more interior space, thanks to the longer wheelbase that's been made possible by the adoption of the brand's CLAR cluster architecture platform. Uh, there's also state-of-the-art driver assistance features, plus there's cutting-edge safety kit and uh, the latest in media connectivity too. And we're promised more of an emphasis on driving dynamics as well, highlighted by the introduction of two M performance variants which now head up the range. Sounds promising, doesn't it? Let's see what this car has to offer. BMW thinks that coupe SUV models should offer more than just sleeker looks. The driving experience should be sharper and more dynamic too. Uh, with the original X4, only nominal efforts were made in this regard. A marginal reduction in ride height, a slight stiffening of the springs. With this Mark II model though, we're promised that the job has been done properly. It helps, of course, that the fundamentals are so much better this time around. The much stiffer CLAR cluster architecture platform, for example, and as standard on all variants, there's a redeveloped X-Drive four-wheel drive system, which uses a planetary gear set incorporated within the rear axle to vary drive between each individual rear wheel as you power through the corners. A perfect 50-50 front-to-rear weight distribution uh, helps here too, as does the way the rear track's been widened by 30 millimetres over the previous model. And there's more. The front end has been thoroughly re-engineered and now features a new double wishbone suspension setup. That helps to bring you greater levels of feedback through the retuned steering system, which now uses BMW's variable sport setup. And that's one of those that offers more response the more lock you apply. In addition, as before, there is a lower ride height than you'll get in the X3, so a lower centre of gravity, and stiffer suspension with firmer M Sport springs fitted this time around as standard. 
It all delivers a pretty astonishing degree of handling competence for a model professing to be any sort of SUV and it's possible to carry impressively high speeds through tightening turns without tyre squealing drama. And that's also aided by performance control torque vectoring which lightly breaks the inner rear wheel at speed improving cornering traction. You would never even think of driving this way in a directly comparable Mercedes GLC Coupe or indeed in this BMW's X3 showroom stablemate. Now if you've never driven a Porsche Macan you'd even be moved to call this display class leading. It is certainly the next best thing that you'll find in this segment. Now another part of the reason why lies with the steering which uh, seems initially quite heavy but once you've adjusted to it, feels wonderfully precise and direct, if not quite as fearsome as the rack in that much pricier Porsche. Is this BMW as agile as the brand's mechanically similar 3 or 4 series models? Well, not quite. The extra ride height and the near 1.9 tonne curb weight say to that. But it gets much closer to it than you'd imagine it would, to the point where if you're shifting into an X4 from one of those, next to no acclimatisation will be required. You'll want to know about engines, of course, which from launch saw most models use the same mainstream twin-powered diesels that feature in so many other BMW models, namely a 190 HP four-cylinder two-litre unit in the xDrive 20D version we're trying here, or an alternative 265 HP six-cylinder three-litre power plant in the xDrive 30D derivative that most people probably won't want to stretch to. Either way, you have to have the brand's silky smooth ZF 8-speed automatic gearbox and a soundtrack that's uh, artificially augmented through the stereo speakers. And now both these Volume X4 variants are acceptably rapid, even this 20D making 62 miles an hour in 8 seconds dead on the way to 132 miles an hour. The 30D improves that to 5.8 seconds and 149 mph. Either way, if it's relevant for you, there's a brake towing capacity of two tons. If you have the budget for more power, then you'll want to consider instead one of the two desirable M40i and M40d M performance derivatives, uh, both with more potent six-cylinder, three-litre power on tap, and there to go Porsche Macan hunting at the top of the range. The M40i petrol model has a higher 354 HP output, but the 326 HP diesel M40d compensates with 180 newton meters more torque, putting out a 680 newton meter total. In both instances, uh, you'll make 62 miles an hour from rest in just 4.9 seconds with the aural accompaniment of a throaty M Sport exhaust, uh, and that's en route to a top speed which has to be artificially limited at 155 miles an hour. In each case, a uh, standard M Sport differential is fitted to help you get all that power down when you're accelerating out of the turns, and that really makes a difference, especially when it's damp. And launch control is included for Grand Prix style starts. Whichever X4 model you decide on, to get the most from the driving experience on offer, you'll need to make frequent use of the various modes provided by the standard DPC, Drive Performance Control System, uh, the switch gear for which is down here by the gear stick. Now you might be familiar with this kind of thing by now, um, it's a system that uh, allows you to tweak the steering, the throttle, the gear change timings and the stability control system thresholds depending on the operating setting that you select. Ignore dry performance control or select its most relaxed comfort or efficient Eco Pro settings and the travelling experience in this car, although it's very comfortable, is pretty unremarkable. Switch into sport though and the reaction you feel immediately gets keener and more alert. Uh, the six cylinder models which get a quicker changing sport version of the auto gearbox also get an even more focused sport plus setting too. Across the range, to complete the functionality of the DPC system, uh, you can add in the adaptive suspension option, which we would highly recommend. Now that enables the various drive performance control settings to also influence ride quality too. It's a pretty important box to tick in our view, given the fact that this time around, all X4s come as standard with super firm M Sport suspension, which can be pretty unyielding over poorer surfaces. Fortunately though, for those who object to this and who don't want adaptive suspension, more sensible springing is offered as a no-cost option. 
Talking of suspension, as we mentioned earlier, it's been lowered over what you'll get with the X3, which inevitably makes this X4 even less use off-road. Although, of course, that won't bother likely buyers one jot. Uh, as usual in this segment, the four-wheel drive system on offer is one of those on-demand tarmac-orientated setups that powers only two driven wheels, in this case the rear ones, unless a loss of traction demands the uh, instant inclusion of torque to the front axle too. Uh, the more efficient transfer case that the X-Drive system now has is borrowed from BMW's 7 Series Luxury Saloon, and that probably tells you absolutely everything you need to know about the kind of terrain it's been developed for. The brand insists, though, that muddy car parks and light field tracks are still well within this model's compass. And to back that up, uh, it points out that the ground clearance height, 204 millimetres, still allows a fording depth of 500 millimetres. Uh, should you end up somewhere that you really shouldn't have ventured in the first place in your X4, then you'll be glad of an approach angle of 25.7 degrees, uh, a departure angle of 22.6 degrees, and a ramp breakover angle of 19.4 degrees all of which is totally irrelevant for this car's target market, who are well-heeled folk who like the idea of a sports coupe, but who want something still driver-orientated, but trendier and more versatile. This second-generation X4 delivers on that remit far better than its predecessor ever did, and far better than its most direct Mercedes rival. You can't ask for much more than that. BMW doesn't like the term SUV, preferring to call all its X-Series models either SAVs, sports activity vehicles, or as in this case, SACs, sports activity coupes. Now, we don't really like the proliferation of confusing acronyms, but we do get the point that the Munich manufacturer wants to make, namely that many of its X-Series products are rather too road-orientated and stylized to deserve the rather clunky-sounding SUV tag, especially this one. This X4 is subtly bigger and sleeker in second generation form, 81 mils longer, 37 mils wider, and three millimeters lower. Statistics that deliver dynamically stretched proportions intended to emphasize this model's perfect 50-50 weight distribution and to hint at its performance potential. The overall statement all of this makes continues not to be quite as extreme as the one that's delivered by BMW's larger X6, but it still catches the eye, a little more modestly holding two fingers up to the establishment. Now, the Munich brand believes this X4 has the sporting elegance of a classical coupe. Well, we think it's debatable whether any car of this kind can ever manage that. But this is certainly a design that will prove popular with those who desire a BMW of this sort, but want something a bit less staid and suburban than an X3. You notice that most of all in profile, where the coupe-like roofline reaches its highest point over the front seats before dropping gently down towards the trailing edge of the boot lid. For all that, though, this car still has more of the look of an SUV hat than any kind of coupe. Uh, one reason being that it lacks the frameless windows that give you that sort of feel in the larger X6. In compensation, though, there are clearly defined haunches and distinctive wheel arches. Plus, uh, there's the usual BMW Hofmeister King at the base of the sea pillars there. It all completes a fashionable effect that ideally needs to be set off by the M aerodynamic body styling touches fitted to the car we have here. Wheel choices range from 18 to 21 inches in size and we've got 19 inch M light double spoke rims fitted here. Now these vents just behind the arches are just for show. They do look pretty good though. The X4 is now a slightly more muscular and agile looking thing, especially at the front, where large air intakes and strong character lines in the front apron visually lower the center of gravity and aim to signal the sharper dynamics. Uh, the now larger three-dimensional Kidney grille is much the same as that found on the X3, and flanking it are standard adaptive LED headlamps that, as an option, can feature the BMW Icon LED intelligent adaptive technology that we're trying here. When illuminated, uh, these feature a distinctive eyebrow-style graphic. Avoid base sport spec and these slim LED fog lamps are standard. 
Move to the rear and this second generation model's wider rear track is emphasized by sleeker, wider and sculpted L-shaped taillights that now feature full LED illumination and 3D styling. Uh, the roof spoiler with its integrated central stop light is now downward sloping and all engines get twin tailpipes built into this lower diffuser which will feature a much more dynamic design if you can stick to the M Sport or M Performance models. Of course, as usual, what is more important is what you can't see, uh, primarily the fact that the underskin architecture, which in the previous X4 was based on a 3 Series, now draws from more upmarket 5 Series drive technology. Now, it uses parts of that model's much stiffer CLAR cluster architecture platform. So in short, there's a reason this car now feels more sophisticated, both on the road and in the cabin. So let's take a seat behind the wheel where the driving position is a bit lower than it would be in an X3, but it'll still feel pleasingly commanding if you switched into this car from either a 3, 4 or a 5 series. And for the first time in an X4, you're treated to a properly premium experience behind the wheel. And towards the end of its life, the old F26 series X4 model's cabin was beginning to lag behind obvious rivals in terms of overall quality. Certainly didn't particularly appeal to owners downsizing from the much more luxurious X6. This interior might though. All the materials used feel great to touch and the proper leather and metal finishing on this plusher variant feels very special indeed. Now true, with some of the controls there's perhaps more of a similarity to lesser BMW models than some well-heeled owners might want, but otherwise the layout is difficult to fault. And everything seems to have been faultlessly screwed together by the US Spartanburg factory. Now, we mentioned the newfound close relationship that this second generation X4 now has with BMW's 5 Series model. Well, inside you really feel that, perhaps most notably with the use that this X4 makes of the cutting edge 6th generation iDrive media connectivity systems from that car. Most notably, that means this 10.25 inch professional multimedia setup, which is standard provided you've avoided entry level sport trim, which gets a much less sophisticated setup with a 6.5 inch screen. Now we like the uh, simple, intuitive way this preferable professional system works with menus that can be customized to your taste. Uh, in its standard form, the monitor is divided into simple connected drive, navigation, uh, media radio, my vehicle, communications and notification segments. Uh, the connected drive menu is particularly informative, uh, delivers a range of downloadable apps and access to BMW suite of online services. Those are designed to enhance your journey by sending you up-to-date information while you're at the wheel. Everything from weather and latest news to a rainfall radar and an online search system. Astonishingly though, on a car of this price, Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring connectivity costs extra. Other options include a concierge service and an online entertainment package that will give you direct access to millions of music tracks. Uh, it's also possible to connect in Microsoft Exchange 365 to your car so you can control your inbox and sync your calendar. As usual, you can operate the whole thing either by voice or by twisting the usual iDrive controller down by the gear stick here. Uh, plus, there are two further control options this time around. Uh, one standard uh, touchscreen interface for the central professional iDrive screen and one is available at extra cost a gesture control feature which recognizes up to six gestures via a 3d sensor at the base of the control display so a twirl of your outstretched finger will vary the volume control while a jab towards the screen will allow you to answer a call now the idea is that these gestures can be performed without taking your eyes off the road in practice, though, we found the sensor's response uh, frustratingly patchy unless exactly the right kind of motion is performed. And that often leaves you in a situation where you're doing, well, nothing more than making what appear to be obscene gestures at other road users. We've no issues with the driving position though, unless you count the fact that rather meanly BMW charges extra for seat lumbar support on mainstream models. Uh, the redesigned chairs do feature a great side support as standard though, and they position you perfectly in front of a three spoke wheel that in this case is of the grippy thick rimmed M Sport variety. That's a design we particularly like. Through it, you'll be viewing one of three different instrument binnacle layouts, depending on the variant you've chosen. Base Sport models use uh, conventional gauges 
Series and the M Sport variants get the part TFT screen virtual dial semi-digital cockpit layout we have here. As an option, you can replace these with a full virtual dial layout that comes as part of the digital cockpit instrument binnacle, and that's fitted as standard on the top M Performance variants. Uh, whatever layout you end up with, though, it won't be necessary to look at this very much if you've gone for the optional head-up display, and that's 75% larger than it is on smaller BMWs. Little stylistic details really make a cabin like this. This optional Sensatec stitched dashboard covering, for example, uh, the subtle ambient lighting that can bathe the cabin in shades of green, yellow, orange, blue, lilac or white, and the embossed X badges concealed on the door cards and on the B pillars. There's more X branding at the base of the centre stack, and that's just above this smart covered cubby just ahead of the gear stick. This features a beautiful sliding top that glides back to reveal twin cup holders, 12 volt and USB ports and a compartment for your phone that can incorporate an optional wireless charging mat. There's another covered storage area between the seats incorporating a further USB point and a pull-out cubby down by the driver's knee. Now we were a bit disappointed by the size of the glove box and by the fact that there's no overhead compartment for your sunglasses but the door pockets are reasonably shaped and they incorporate bottle holders. Forward visibility is great thanks to the commanding seating position and these thin pillars. Predictably though, your rearward view is pretty compromised by that swept back roof. So it's just as well that BMW fits a rear view camera, parking sensors and even a self parking system on all models as standard. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now you'd expect the 54 millimeter wheelbase increase this time around to pay dividends here, although the slightly narrow door openings are a bit on the small side. Once you're on the back seat, it is, as promised, significantly more roomy than the previous generation model, and that's thanks to an extra 27 millimeters of additional legroom. However, that swept back styling has to tell somewhere, and predictably, there are compromises to be made in headroom. Um, average sized adults should be fine, but six footers will either need to slouch in their seats or ride with their heads brushing the roof lining. Uh, this narrow central seating position and this rather prominent center transmission tunnel will together also make it quite difficult to accommodate three folk. Uh, you don't get a sliding option for the bench base, which we would have expected. You can have that feature on arrival Audi Q5. Uh, there are two positions for the seat back though. Otherwise, irritations here are few. Uh, a few parents might wish that a nice fixed child seat fastening was provided for the middle seat as well as the outer two. Otherwise, there's precious little to criticize here. Uh, BMW's provided a pair of USB sockets for rear passengers to charge their various electronic devices. A smart set of ventilation controls is provided. Plus, there are seat back nets and lidded cup holders in this fold down center armrest here. Um, if you pay extra for the big two section panoramic glass roof we've got fitted here. Uh, the otherwise rather dark cabin can be flooded with a welcome burst of sunlight. Right, let's take a look out back. Now, first impressions are encouraging. For a start, you get an electrically operated tailgate as standard, and this particular one is embellished with an optional comfort access feature, which allows you to raise it by waving your foot beneath the bumper. If a uh, key in pocket, you approach the car with both hands laden down with bags. Um, once the powered hatch rises, you'll find it necessary to negotiate, well, quite a high loading lip before you can get anything in. But uh, once you've done that, you'll will be able to access 525 litres of capacity. That's 25 litres more than the first generation model offered. Uh, it's still 25 litres less than you get in the X3 though. This boot is also 25 litres bigger than you'll get in a rival Mercedes GLC coupe. Uh, to give you some more context, the capacity is also 30 litres more than you'll get in BMW's 3 Series Touring Estate and only 55 litres less than you get in the larger X6 model. So in short, there's not too much to complain about on that score given the kind of car this is. Pull up the floor panel which rises on a beautifully damped 
gas strut and you'll find a useful concealed compartment and that's provided courtesy of the fact that BMW doesn't supply any sort of spare wheel as standard, just a fiddly tyre repair kit. Now that's something we disapprove of on any kind of SUV or crossover class vehicle. Uh, if you can avoid entry level trim you'll get standard run flat tyres and we'd want those at the very least. In terms of practicality, there's a 12 volt socket, a couple of pull out bag hooks, the usual tie down points, uh, there's a left hand tensioner strap and a left hand netted storage area too. The optional extended storage pack includes these useful boot floor lashing rails as well. Need more room? Well, if the item in question is merely long and thin, like a set of skis, it may suffice merely to flatten the middle part of this standard 40-20-40 split folding rear backrest. If though you really need to supersize your space, then it's obviously a case of pushing forward uh, the rear bench with these levers. Now this uh, will reveal a 1430 litre capacity and the area you get is usefully flat and square. X4 pricing sits in the 43 to 55,000 pound bracket and all models come only with X-Drive four-wheel drive and automatic transmission. Direct comparisons with this model's X3 showroom stablemate are slightly difficult to make because the spec structure is a bit different, but in rough terms, you're looking at needing a premium of around £3,000 to go from an X3 to a directly comparable version of this sleeker X4. In the mainstream range, buyers choose between a couple of familiar BMW diesel power plants. Things kick off with the 190 HP 2 litre 4 cinder unit used in the X-Drive 20D models. Or if you can find just under £6,000 more, you can go for the 265 HP 3 litre 6 cinder power plant, which features in X-Drive 30D variants, which also get a sharper shifting sport version of the auto gearbox. Either way, there are three trim levels, Sport, M Sport, which is what we have here, and and M Sport X. Beyond this lie the two fully fledged M Performance Series versions, both of which require a budget of around £56,000. Uh, you can stick with the diesel and choose the 326 HP M40D or go for petrol power with the 354 HP M40i. Now, before we have a look at rivals from other brands, let's give you some perspective on how this car slots into BMW's own lineup. Now we've already talked about the price premium over an X3, but it's probably more likely that a potential X4 buyer will have their eye on other models in the Munich Makers range. Another coupe SUV perhaps? Well, you'll pay around £7,500 less for a comparable version of the company's smaller X2 and about £10,000 more for a directly comparable version of the brand's larger X6. Arguably though, a more direct BMW competitor to this car isn't any sort of SUV, but the brand's mechanically very similar five-door four-series Grand Coupe, which in directly comparable form will save you about £6,000 over an X4, as will a comparable three-series touring estate. Lots of choice then. Even before you start looking at the offerings of other manufacturers, there's really only one direct mid-sized coupe SUV competitor to this model in the market, and that's Mercedes GLC Coupe. Uh, predictably, one of those costs about the same as an X4, well, in mainstream form anyway. It is likely, though, that potential buyers of this BMW will also be considering some of the sportier, more conventionally shaped mid-sized premium SUV models. If so, an Alfa Romeo Stelvio might be tempting at a saving of around £8,000, although it won't have the build quality of this BMW. A Jaguar F-Pace gets closer, but it's not as efficient as an X4, and comparable versions will save you only around £2,000. Now, conceivably, a sportily trimmed version of a less emotively marketed premium mid-sized SUV might also appeal. An upper-spec S-line trimmed Audi Q5, for example, that could be yours for the cost of an entry-level sport-trimmed X4, although it wouldn't be as sharp to drive. Uh, a Volvo XC60 would feel even more wallowy in comparison, even in sporty R design spec. Uh, that would save you about £6,000 over a comparable X4 X-Drive 20D. A Range Rover Evoque TD4 in four-wheel drive auto form would be better, and it might get you a similar saving, but it still couldn't keep a well-driven X4 in sight through a set of twisting bends. Um, much better in this regard would be a Porsche Macan, which in diesel form costs from just under £50,000, and in price and power terms would be directly comparable to the six-cylinder X4 X-Drive 30D variants. 
Now, for the fortunate few lucky enough to be able to show serious interest in the top N40D and M40i X4 models, the competitors on offer include some really desirable contenders, but they're all petrol powered. So if you have an eye on an M40D, uh, there's nothing else on the market that's really quite the same. Uh, as for the M40i petrol variant, well, again, the closest rival that we can point you to is the Mercedes GLC Coupe, which in uh, equivalent Mercedes AMG GLC 43 formatic form, will save you about £3,000, as, by the way, would a comparable Audi SQ5 or Jaguar F-Pace 3.0-litre V6S. Uh, a comparable Porsche Macan GTS would cost around £3,000 more than an M40i. Enough with range, structure and model comparisons. Let's say you've considered the X4 lineup and this model's opposition and you've concluded that there's nothing else you'd like quite as much. If so, uh, then you're going to need to know just how generous the Munich maker has been when it comes to the standard specification. So let's look at that now. Even entry-level sports spec gives you plenty. To be specific, you get 18-inch V-spoke alloy wheels plus a powered tailgate, auto headlamps and wipers and full LED technology for the headlights and the tail. Uh, there's also BMW's parking assistance package, which includes front and rear sensors, a reversing camera, and which can automatically steer you into spaces. Driving dynamics are improved courtesy of firm M Sport suspension, variable sport steering, and performance control torque vectoring, uh, which lightly brakes the inner rear wheel at speed through tight turns, maximizing cornering traction. Plus, as usual with BMWs, there's the brand's uh, drive performance control driving mode setup, which uh, enables you to tweak the steering and the throttle response to your mood. Choose from Sport, Comfort and Eco Pro, plus the six of the models get an extra Sport Plus setting too. Inside, all X4 buyers get now softer Vanaska leather upholstery, heated front seats, uh, leather-stitched sport multifunction steering wheel, three-zone climate control, ambient lighting, cruise control, an anti-dazzle rear-view mirror, a reversing camera, and a trip computer. Uh, annoyingly, a space over spare wheel is only optional, but you do get run-flat tyres as standard if you can stretch beyond the sport level of trim. Hey, I want to know about infotainment too. All X4 models come with the usual BMW iDrive system that in standard form features a 6.5 inch color screen, Bluetooth with audio streaming, navigation and a decent quality six speaker DAB stereo. Plus, you get a full suite of BMW connected drive services, including teleservices and real time traffic information, along with the brand suite of online services that give you access to things like news reports, weather forecasts and a whole range of BMW apps. In addition, the system will read out text messages to you. Uh, BMW Connected enables route planning to be carried out on any device. That's a process which can draw from your calendar entries while taking real-time traffic information into account and even making an allowance for a refueling stop if it's necessary. It then transfers the data to the car's navigational system when it's time to set off. Now, on your journey, your current trip status can be automatically shared with those at your destination by text message. And when you arrive, full door-to-door -door navigation will allow seamless transfer of route guidance to a smartphone or a smartwatch. All X4 buyers get the brand's remote services package, which via a clever BMW Connected Plus app will allow you to control many aspects of your car's operation via your smartphone. As most of these kinds of apps tend to do, this one will help you to find the car if you forgot where you parked it, and it can remotely lock or unlock the doors. But it can also learn your mobility routines. It can read your calendar and it will even prompt you when to leave for scheduled journeys. It'll get familiar with your most frequently travelled routes and it will memorise them as future destinations. So, all in all, there's plenty included in base sport spec. If budget permits, though, you'll probably want to stretch up to the properly dynamic M sport spec that so many X4 customers end up choosing. Uh, that's what we've got here. So is it worth upgrading to it? Well, it's certainly tempting. The extra cash gets you bi-colour ferric grey M double-spoke 19-inch alloy wheels, a subtle M aerodynamic body styling kit with high-gloss shadow and exterior trim, plus further black high-gloss finishing for the front grille slats. Inside, the cabin gets bespoke 
M Sport trimming, uh, the semi digital cockpit instrument display, and a lovely M Sport multifunction leather steering wheel. And there are LED front fog lights, sport seats, and a larger fuel tank. Plus, you get the upgraded BMW Professional Media Package, which is optional on the lesser models and which comes with a larger center dash 10.25 inch touchscreen, which includes extra elements like online entertainment. That's a feature that allows you to listen to radio stations from all around the world. Perhaps, like many X4 buyers, you had it in mind to opt for an M Sport variant like this one and then add in a few well-chosen extras. Well, if so, pause before taking that course and consider the alternative M Sport X trim option, which for a £1,400 premium over M Sport spec throws in a panoramic glass roof, specific aluminium rhombicle dark interior trim and some frozen grey contrast design elements around the wheel arches, for example. The latter colour apparently one with racing rally connotations. Plus, there are BMW Icon adaptive LED headlights that feature a distinctive eyebrow style graphic. They're paired with LED front indicators and they include beams that turn with the road and dip themselves in the face of oncoming traffic. That only leaves the top M40i and M40d high performance V6 petrol and diesel variants, which are recognizable by their trapezoidal split tailpipes, which incorporate a throaty flap controlled M Sports exhaust system, and the unique cerium grey finishing for the mirror caps, the air breathers, and the front grille slats. Brand loyalists will also note the bicolour orbit grey. 20 inch M double spoke wheels, which feature special calipers designating the upgraded M Sports braking system. Uh, a standard M Sport differential helps you get on the throttle earlier when you're powering out of corners, <laughs> especially when it's damp. And launch control is included too for Grand Prix style starts. Uh, these models also include an anthracite headliner and powered seat adjustment. Plus, M40i and M40d buyers get a virtual screen digital cockpit instrument cluster. And those BMW Icon Adaptive Headlights too. On to extra cost features. Uh, the LED Icon Headlights we just mentioned are available at extra cost on other models, either separately or as part of a visibility package. That also includes a high beam assistant to automatically dip the headlights at night. Uh, that's just one element in a lengthy options list that allows you to really go to town on embellishing your X4 should the funds to do so permit. Uh, for us, the most important feature to start with in the box ticking process is adaptive suspension. Now that allows you to tweak the ride to suit the road you're on and the mood you're in. And it's there to really complete the functionality of the standard drive performance control system that uh, we referenced earlier. Uh, given that all X4s come as standard with with very firm M Sport suspension, we think that the ability to adapt the way that this car rides is especially important with this model line. And this option will only add about 500 pounds to the price of the car. If you really can't stretch to it though, and you don't want to keep your uh, chiropractor on speed dial, uh, then we would suggest that you consider taking up the no cost option that BMW offers of swapping out the passive M Sport suspension for the softer setup, which is used on the X3. You might also want to avail yourself of the choicest elements of technology lately applied to the X4 lineup. Uh, things like the achingly clever BMW display key with its built in color screen. Now, this allows you to check whether you've closed the doors, when a service is due, and how much fuel you've got. Plus, if you've paid extra for the auxiliary heating system, uh, the display key will give you remote control of the ventilation system. So, for example, uh, you can warm the car up or cool it down while you're having your breakfast. Uh, another option that you might want to consider if you have a variant which is fitted with the upgraded professional media system is gesture control. Now, that's a feature that allows you to activate many cabin features with a mere waft of your hand. Um, in addition, it'd be very nice to have four other high-tech additions. Uh, there's what BMW calls enhanced Bluetooth with wireless charging. Now, that's a feature which uh, recharges your smartphone when you place it in the uh, little tray of the gear lever.
either. Uh, now with that in place, you'll be more able to make use of the optional Wi-Fi hotspot package. Uh, now that delivers a high-speed LTE internet connection for up to 10 devices. Uh, we'd also be tempted by the now much improved head-up display and also the digital cockpit virtual screen instrument cluster that uh, we mentioned earlier. And now all of those high-tech features I just mentioned, uh, the display key, the gesture control, the uh, wireless charging, the Wi-Fi hotspot, the head-up display and the digital cockpit are available as individual options or they can all come together as part of an optional technology package. Beyond technology upgrades, there are various extra media connectivity options you can add to. Now, if you're into these, uh, you'll want to make sure that the X4 variant that you've chosen is going to come fitted with the more sophisticated professional media system with the larger and more personalizable 10.25 inch screen. Now, this setup also includes a unique and very useful on-street parking information feature. Now, that works in nine key UK cities and it can provide predictions on the probability of a free parking space being available on the streets in the city centres. As I said earlier, uh, the professional media package is standard above entry level trim and you can pay extra for that if you have a lesser sport derivative. Either way though, a whole fresh era of media connectivity awaits X4 buyers this time around. Now, Unfortunately, most of these do cost extra, including rather unforgivably on a car of this price, the Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring system. The Android Auto setup isn't available at all though. At least you can add in Apple CarPlay relatively cheaply and unusually the connection works without any cables. Want to go further with in-car connectivity? Well, if so, you might want to take out a three-year subscription to BMW's concierge service that at the press of a button will give you direct access to an operator who will be able to answer, well, pretty much any question about your journey as you drive it. Now, to be honest, we could do without that, but we would be very tempted by the optional online entertainment package. Uh, now, that will give you direct access to millions of music tracks from either Deezer or Napster without the need for a mobile or an MP3 device in the car. Uh, as part of that, you can access your own music via cloud-based services. So, uh, for example, you could create a playlist at home and then have it available to stream into the car. Business buyers, well, they might also want to consider optional Microsoft Office Exchange 365 connectivity. Uh, now that in car will allow them to control emails in their inbox and sync their online calendar. Now, finally, if you really want to push the boat out, um, other options include a TV tuner and a couple of available audio upgrades, either the BMW Advanced Loudspeaker System or the full house Harman Kardon audio setup. As for optional driving aids, well, we mentioned the adaptive suspension earlier. Uh, on ordinary M Sport models, you might additionally want to add the M Sport braking package. Uh, should you do a lot of highway mileage, you might want to consider the active cruise control with stop and go function package. Now, that will uh, automatically regulate your speed on the highway, um, and if necessary, it will bring you to a complete stop and then it will start you off again if you come across a tailback. Um, if you think that you or your partner might struggle with slotting this SUV into tight spaces, then you could consider the Parking Assistant Plus system. Uh, now that will give you a 3D surround view camera system, uh, which will also be really useful when you're driving off-road. Now this 3D setup includes a remote 3D view function, which will give drivers the ability to call up a three-dimensional live image of, of their vehicle and of its immediate vicinity on their smartphone. Very neat. Want to add a touch of luxury into your X4? Well, then you'll want the premium package that we've been trying here, which gives you a panoramic glass roof, along with powered seat adjustment and lumbar support for the front seats. Pay more and those front chairs can feature cooled ventilation too. Uh, there's also the option of super soft merino leather, and that will come extended onto the dashboard and onto the doors. In winter, heating for the rear seats and the steering wheel would be nice to have too. 
The uh, practical extras you'll need are much as before. Many X4 buyers pay extra for comfort access, which allows you to open the tailgate by waving your foot beneath the bumper. Plus, many of them also pay more for extra cost extended storage, which includes uh, additional hinged compartments, uh, multifunctional hooks, lashing rails in the boot, and extra 12 volt sockets and USB ports. Uh, now, both comfort access and extended storage uh, come included if you go for the popular comfort package, uh, which also includes power folding mirrors and acoustic glazing. And that can also be specified to extend to the front side windows. Other extras that uh, fall into the practical category include roof rails, an electrically deployable tow bar, sun blinds for the rear windows, a luggage compartment separating net, uh, BMW's optional Trackstar stolen vehicle tracking system, and the usual racks for roof boxes, uh, skis, bikes, and snowboards. Plus, as we mentioned earlier, on a base sports spec model, you're going to have to pay extra for either a space saver spare wheel or the run flat tyres if you don't want to be stuck by the side of the road fiddling around with a tyre mobility kit the next time you get a puncture. Uh, sports spec buyers will have to pay extra for the larger fuel tank too. On to aesthetics, um, if you don't want your car's paintwork finished in the standard alpine white or jet black solid shades, you're going to have to pay extra for one of the metallic colours. We've got the flamenco red finish here. Uh, there's also a more exclusive sunstone metallic BMW individual colour available if you want your X4 to look particularly unique. If you have an M Sport spec car and you like the lesser sport variants satin aluminium exterior finishing, then you can add that as an option. And for sport variant customers, who want an M Sport look without the M Sport price tag, there's optional high gloss shadow line exterior trim too. To complete the effect, there's a bespoke selection of alloy wheels, which vary from 18 to 21 inches in size. Wheels are a key part of the popular M Sport Plus packages. Uh, there are two, one for the M Sport models that gives you an upgrade to 20 inch rims and includes the M Sport braking system, and one for the M40i and M40d variants, which upgrade you to 21 inch rims and include an M version of the adaptive suspension setup that we uh, talked about earlier. Um, both packages also include sun protection glass and the Harman Kardon audio system. Uh, you'll want to get the look of the interior right too. Now the basic cabin trimming options give you the chance to add inlays in various aluminium, high gloss black or wood finishes. The wood inlays are particularly nice, particularly the Fine Line Cove package which features gorgeous open poured timber that's really lovely to run your fingers across. Uh, this particular car also has a lovely optional Sensatec finish for the instrument binnacle. Uh, BMW individual door sill finishes would be nice and you can have a galvanic embellisher for the controls and either blue or red contrast stitching for the leather seats. Safety is, as you'd expect from BMW, well accounted for, hence this car's full house five-star Euro NCAP safety rating. You'd expect the basics, twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus front and rear ISOFIX child seat fastenings, and the usual electronic assistance for traction and stability control, primarily DSC plus stability control and DTC traction control. There's plenty of braking peace of mind too, with the ABS system supplemented by fading compensation, CBC cornering brake control, and a neat brake drying system that keeps the brake discs free of moisture in wet weather. Panic stops are aided by a brake assist system and advertised to following motorists by dynamic brake lights that uh, flash a bright warning. You also get a multi-collision braking function that in the event of an impact will keep brake pressure applied until you come to a complete stop. Uh, now we should mention also that all variants get what BMW calls an active guard system and that's based around forward collision warning technology. At over 30 miles an hour the vehicle scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards and if one's detected you'll be warned and the brakes will be uh, preconditioned for maximum effectiveness. Uh, now should you be travelling at under 30 miles an hour and you're not responding to a detected hazard then the brakes will automatically be applied and that reduces the severity of any resulting accident and hopefully will alleviate it altogether. 
Other neat safety features fitted as standard across the range include an alertness assistant, and that's there to monitor you for signs of drowsiness, a trailer stabilisation function which will stop trailer sway if you have a trailer fitted, and hill start assistant to stop you from drifting backwards on uphill junctions. Best of all, though, we think, is the BMW emergency call with teleservices system, which in an accident can automatically alert the emergency services. Now, this system not only uh, will give them your exact GPS location, Location, but it also provides recovery personnel with information on your speed at point of impact, how hard the seat belts were pulled, how many airbags burst and so on. So if you were to have a crash, it would all mean not only that the emergency teams would know exactly where you were, but also that they would arrive at the scene more prepared and more ready to get you out to safety than they could ever otherwise be. And that's a potentially life-saving difference. Now, the setup has now been further improved to also automatically activate after low-speed collisions below the threshold for uh, airbag deployment. Um, and immediately after the impact, uh, they will flash up an iDrive screen message offering to contact BMW's accident assistance service directly. Want to go further? Well, one extra you could add is BMW's dynamic safety system, which, if a collision looks inevitable, automatically brings the seats to the safest position, tightens the seat belts, and closes any open windows. Otherwise, if you want to pay extra for safety technology, it's a question of choosing between the two driving assistant packages on offer, uh, which bundle together the choicest elements of BMW's current technology on this regard. So let's start with the standard driving assistant pack, which gives you six main camera-based safety features. Uh, these include approach control warning to tell you if you're getting too close to the car in front. Uh, then there's lane change warning, which works on the move to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake when there's a vehicle over in your blind spot. Uh, now, you might be familiar with the third pack feature, lane departure warning. Now, that will stop dozy drivers from veering over lane separating lines on the highway. And perhaps you You've also come across something like this pack's speed limit information system. Now that will picture speed signs on the dash as you pass them. You might also be familiar uh, with something like this pack's crossing traffic warning rear. Now that will alert you to oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a parking space. Plus, the driving assistant pack also includes a system that warns you of impending rear collision accidents, flashing hazard warning lights to any following driver who might be about to crash into you, while simultaneously tightening the seat belts and closing the windows to ensure that you're as protected as you can be should the collision take place. Now, if you want more, an additional Driving Assistant Plus pack gives you all those Driving Assistant pack features, plus eight other camera-driven elements, headlined by the Active Cruise Control with Stop and Go function package we mentioned earlier. Uh, the other pack features include a Crossing Traffic Warning Front feature, uh, which will alert you to oncoming vehicles if you're coming frontwards out of a parking space or you're trying to edge out of a junction and you can't completely see traffic coming at you from either side. Uh, plus, there's also crossroads warning which alerts you to traffic coming at you from the sides of the crossroads. Uh, as the name suggests, wrong way warning will make an enormous fuss if you forget yourself and you end up going the wrong way down a one-way street. And highway orientated driving assistance plus pack aids include a lane change assistant, a lane keeping assistant with active side collision protection and a steering and lane control assistant, all of which use light steering intervention to keep you where you should be on the road and away from other vehicles and uh, together give this car a limited level of autonomous driving capability. Plus, there is also an evasion aid which gives you extra steering assistance in critical situations where it's still possible to avoid an accident. Uh, let's say, for example, someone suddenly pulls out in front of you or you suddenly have to make a dramatic lane change to avoid slow moving traffic. It's all very reassuring. For all the talk surrounding this X4 model's fashionable looks and dynamic drive, perhaps an equally impressive attribute lies in its relative cost-effectiveness. Now, we're told that comes thanks to an unyielding emphasis on cutting-edge engine technology, weight reduction, and slippery aerodynamics. As we'll see in a second, that is certainly true, but there are a few caveats that we need to start with before we allow BMW to start to trumpet the benefits of its efficiency technology. 
On an X4, you don't get the relatively lightweight mini-derived platform that helps the smaller X2 SUV coupe uh, so much in this regard, or the magnesium and aluminium-rich chassis that trims so much weight off BMW's comparable 5 Series model. As a result, the X4's returns are some way off the figures that you'll get with those designs, uh, and that might make business buyers pause for thought in trading from one to the other. Since the original version of this car was launched back in 2014, uh, calculation of official fuel and CO2 stats has moved from the old NEDC, New European Driving Cycle System, uh, to the more real-world accurate WLTP, World Harmonized Light Vehicle Test Procedure. And that's a switch which normally means a significant drop in the stats that manufacturers are now able to quote. With this second generation X4 though, the official readings have uh, well pretty much remained static, which is an effective gain that BMW puts down to three things. Firstly, a significant weight reduction this time around of just over 50 kilos, and that's thanks mainly to the new CLAR chassis. Secondly, there's the brand's latest blue performance engine technology, and that conforms to the latest Euro 60 emission standard, and it uses a particulate filter, oxidation, and NOx absorption catalysts, plus an S our catalytic conversion with AdBlue injection. And thirdly, there's been a 10% improvement in aerodynamics, which makes this car slippery enough to set a fresh benchmark in the segment with a drag coefficient of 0.3 CD. Detail aero improvements include air curtains across front wheels, a rear spoiler with sculpted end plates, additional underbody cladding, and active radiator grille vanes. Plus, significant efficiency gains have been made with the intelligent four-wheel drive system uh, in comparison to the previous X4 model's X-Drive setup. Uh, that's due to lighter components and a clever electro-hydraulic multiplate clutch, which has uh, cut torque losses down by 30%. As usual with a car of this kind, this is a part-time 4x4 setup that keeps you rear-driven most of the time to save energy and fuel, uh, only connecting in the front wheels when a lack of traction demands it. So far, so good. And when you add to all of this the uh, usual benefits of BMW's clever, efficient dynamics technology, well, you've the potential to enjoy luxury SUV motoring and yet still get a reasonably frugal set of running cost returns. Uh, we're talking here of things like on-demand use of ancillary units, electric power steering, low rolling resistance tyres, brake energy regeneration and an auto start stop system to cut the engine when you don't need it when you're stuck in traffic or waiting at the lights. The Septronic auto transmission also includes a coasting function which uh, disconnects the engine at cruising speeds until you need it. Of course, the driver has to play his or her part too, so there's an optimum gear shift indicator on the dash and an Eco Pro mode that you can select in the drive performance control system, which will focus all the car systems on ultimate frugality. Uh, the extra economy created in that Eco Pro setting, BMW reckons it could be up to 20%, uh, is fed back to the driver with in car displays showing the additional number of miles achieved. Plus, there is an Eco Pro route option in the navigation system, which will plot your journey in the most efficient manner. In the My Vehicle Technology in Action part of the iDrive screen, you can also find a driving style analysis feature that will rate your driving based on two criteria, anticipation and acceleration. And you'll be able to monitor how far your efforts towards frugality have taken you in a separate efficient dynamic screen which uh, graphically shows the economy figures you've achieved. And the potential returns if you use all of these systems and achieve a high standard of day-to-day -day operating efficiency, well, as you'd expect, they are only a fraction behind those of an equivalent X3 model. So let's start with the most popular four-cylinder, two-litre X-Drive 20D diesel variant that we're trying here. That can return up to 52.3 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 142 grams per kilometre of CO2. Switch to the alternative six-cylinder X-Drive 30D diesel derivative and you're looking at up to 48.7 mpg and up to 153 grams per kilometre, providing you don't go for one of the really large wheel sizes. Uh, the flagship M40D delivers up to 44.1 mpg and 170 grams per kilometre. The alternative petrol-powered M40i manages up to 31.4 mpg and up to 205 grams per kilometre. 
What else? Uh, well, as usual with BMW, there's a condition-based service indicator on the dash uh, to advise you when your car needs a garage visit. Now, you can check all of this using menus in the iDrive center dash display, and the car will give you four weeks' notice of when a checkup's needed, so you'll have plenty of time to book that. Less familiar to some buyers will be the clever teleservices feature that comes as part of the BMW Connected Drive services that you can access through the iDrive infotainment system. Now via this, before each service appointment's due, your X4 can automatically put in a teleservices call to your nominated BMW service center, complete with detailed information on vehicle condition. You'll then get a call to arrange a service appointment, and that's something that you'll have already budgeted for if, at the point of original purchase, uh, you opted for one of the two fixed cost uh, service inclusive or service inclusive plus packages, and they cover you for five years or 50,000 miles. Now, with these, after a one-off payment, uh, you'll have the peace of mind of knowing that all normal work on the car has been paid for during this period, and that includes items like oil, spark plugs, and filters. What else might you need to know? Uh, well, all variants will attract five years of luxury car tax at £310 per annum. And further on in this X4's model life, we may well see full electric and plug-in hybrid versions. Depreciation, well, that'll be on a par with rival Mercedes GLC coupe models. So in other words, pretty strong. Onto the warranty package. Uh, BMW offers a warranty that lasts for three years, no matter how many miles you complete. As for insurance groups, well, you're looking at Group 32 for this X-Drive 20D. All versions of the 6 and the X-Drive 30D diesel are pitched to Group 41, which does seem a bit unfair because that's pretty close to the Group 43 rating, which is applied to the fire-breathing flagship M40i petrol model. Uh, the M40D is rated at Group 45. The X4 has always been a divisive product. That's the nature of the coupe SUV genre. Is this BMW the mid-sized premium SUV model that can give you everything? SUV, coupe, uh, fastback hatch and sports estate all rolled into one. Or is it trying to be so many different things to so many different people that it ends up pleasing nobody? Opinion on the subject will often be divided. The people who don't like the concept behind this model will tell you to buy a cheaper, more practical X3, but then they're probably the same people who can't see the point of anything prioritizing style over substance. In any case, this X4 does have substance to its proposition, at least when it comes to efficiency, quality, and affordable running costs. It's even reasonably spacious and practical. All of this was true of the original version of this model, so we were interested to see how this second generation design might have evolved. It certainly become significantly more expensive, and as before, there are a few practical and spatial compromises to make in comparison to what you get from a boxier mid-sized SUV. But if that's not a problem, then there's a lot to like here. As promised, this X4 now has a luxury demeanor that it previously lacked, principally in terms of its street side presence, its classy cabin, and its more refined highway demeanor. As a result, uh, this Mark II model is a much more complete product. In many ways, it is now the junior X6 we were always promised, and a car that quite a number of owners of that larger SUV might well be tempted to downsize into. At the same time, uh, the sharper handling dynamics introduced this time around are uh, really good enough to ensure that upsizing three or four series BMW drivers won't feel shortchanged. In summary, don't be dissuaded if you'd like an X4. This may not be quite the sharpest dynamic contender in its segment, but it's still an astonishingly rewarding steer for something based on SUV underpinnings. Now, yes, there is an element of compromise in its packaging, but the world would be a dull place if we only bought cars on a pragmatic basis. This one does defy sense and sensibility, but that's all part of its appeal and why you might really, really want one.